Uh, hello, my friends. Happy to be with you today for our uh, recorded tour of our new chapel, which will be dedicated this coming weekend by Archbishop Winsky, kind of bringing to a big culmination our uh, grand construction project, which we started more than two years ago. So the chapel you see behind me, we've named Holy Family Chapel, kind of in continuity with our nativity theme. And also in continuity are some of the architectural structures and features of the new chapel. We wanted to have it look and feel a little bit like the big church, which is such a beautiful architectural uh, uh, example. And so we maintained some of the same art, uh, some of the same elements of the big church and transferred them over to the chapel. A few of them that you see are like the, uh, the coquina rock on the outside, the uh, glued laminated beams and the tongue and groove ceilings there. Uh, the, uh, the offsetting uh, windows on the facade, and there'll be a few more inside when we go and take a look. But uh, we're so much looking forward to this getting dedicated and to using it. Let's go on inside, and we'll take a look at some of the features there. One thing you're going to notice on the inside is that there are no pews, or I should say no pews yet. Those got delayed because of the pandemic, so those will be installed as soon as it's safe to do that. But we're looking forward to using it. So let's go inside and take a look. Well, here we are inside the chapel. Uh, we're just inside the doors here. Uh, and of course, the, the most striking feature of the chapel is the stained glass uh, and the height of the chapel as well. We'll talk about the stained glass in a few moments, but, but about the height, I, I think that was an important element that we talked about. Uh, in contrast to our big church, a complementary and in contrast to it, you know, in the big church, we're, we're one of the unique features of, of nativity is that we're sitting in the round, right? With the altar in the middle. Uh, and all of us there as a community, kind of together around the altar of God. And that's, a, that's what they call the horizontal dimension of the church. And it's a very valid thing to emphasize. When we came to the chapel, I wanted to emphasize the vertical dimension, right? Which is each one of us and us as a community uh, following the Lord, right? Looking up, in other words. And you have to admit that when you walk into here, the first thing you do is you look up, right? Which is what we wanted to emphasize here. Uh, the, uh, the chapel itself, as you see, and you got to imagine that the pews will be here, it's big enough to accommodate uh, our various uh, daily masses, should we, ha should we have them in here, as well as some of our smaller funerals and weddings and other smaller liturgies, such as uh, our adoration of the Blessed Sacraments, which we're doing on Wednesdays, as you know. We would love to be able to expand that now. Of course, we're going to need some more volunteers to fill up those hours. But the chapel is big enough to accommodate all of those. It's also big enough to accommodate uh, each one of our individual uh, grades in our school so that we can do uh, our monthly masses with, say, the 8th grade, the 7th grade, the 6th grade, and so on. Uh, something that I've been looking forward to do, and we're going to be able to do that now. So it's big enough to accommodate all of those things, but it's small enough that we can keep it uh, air-conditioned and opened all day. It's small enough uh, and to be a little bit more of an intimate prayer, a uh, place of prayer. And, and that's an important aspect of it as well. So turning to the stained glass, you'll see a few elements that I'll point out here, and then we'll talk about each of the individual ones. Uh, we wanted to maintain a, a similar look to the, to the stained glass that we have in the big church, particularly uh, the stained glass on the east, the west, and the south entrances, uh, or uh, south uh, sides. That uh, particular style, our artist replicated in a beautiful way, and, and, and with a similar little individual panes, and just bright, vibrant colors. You should see it when the sun kind of hits it just right. Uh, it passes right through the stained glass, and it's just beautiful. Uh, and, the, and the colors just really pop. Uh, I think you're going to enjoy uh, spending time in here in the decades to come. So uh, it has a similar look and feel of the, of, the, of the church in terms of its stained glass. It also has a similar look in terms of the rock that we put on the sides of the, uh, of the altar. We used a cut coquina rock in this case, but it's that same type of stone and uh, surrounding the stained glass. Well, let me tell you a few of the individual elements of the stained glass and kind of tell the story of what's going on there. The central figures 
Uh, in the stained glass are, of course, the Holy Family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. And it's surrounded by similar colors uh, that are so vibrant. Uh, and it's especially, depending on the time of day, when the sun shines through those, they just come right out. It's just so beautiful. But uh, I'll tell you about kind of the story of the stained glass, uh, beginning at the very top. Uh, what you see up there is uh, a hand coming out of heaven uh, in the form of a blessing. And that's kind of an old Christian symbol of the hand of God the Father, kind of sticking his hand out from the clouds of heaven, right, to extend his blessing down upon earth. So that is the symbol of that. Uh, below him, of course, you see uh, the angels and they're uh, doing their thing there, uh, praising the Lord in their way. And there with the angels, you see the dove of the Holy Spirit. And both the Father's blessing coming down to earth is visually represented by those colors of, of white and yellow and coming into oranges and browns. In the same way, the grace of the Holy Spirit coming down, but in a particular way, the Holy Spirit, the grace of the Holy Spirit comes right down and passes through Mary, passes through Mary to the child Jesus. And of course we know from Scripture that it was through the Holy Spirit that Mary conceived the, the Christ child in her womb, uh, that when she was overshadowed by the Holy Spirit, we wanted to depict that in this scene. So we, we see the grace of the Holy Spirit passing through her uh, to Christ. And of course, uh, next to Mary is Saint Joseph. Uh, you can uh, see his uh, staff that he's carrying with the uh, flowers blooming out of the top of it. One, uh, one little element that you all that you will notice throughout the, uh, throughout the, the stained glass is that all of the characters are looking at Jesus. Whether it's the, the angels, they're looking at Jesus. Joseph, is his eyes are moved toward Jesus. Mary is looking down at Jesus. Uh, so everyone in the, in the scene is looking at Jesus. And of course, Jesus is looking out at us, right? And he's pointing to himself as the way, the truth, and the life there with his right hand. And with his left, he's pointing back up to the Father, right? I am the way to the Father, right? So, and the, the Holy Family there is set in kind of a garden uh, scene. I look at it and, and see uh, being reminiscent of the Garden of Eden, and that would make uh, very good sense uh, because it is through Christ, through his death and resurrection, that paradise is opened again for us once more. So we're a little bit closer up here to the sanctuary. And uh, one thing about the chapel compared to the big church is it is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it, it's a much more, um, uh, it's a smaller space, of course. Uh, we might call it an intimate space. Uh, so a little bit more of a quieter, uh, more intimate place of prayer. And also, you're going to be a lot closer to the altar here than you are in the big church. I mean, there sometimes I feel like I'm a mile away from the, everyone. Uh, but here we're going to be a much more intimate space, a little bit closer, uh, which is a nice thing, which is a, a nice thing. And when we have uh, adoration in here, we'll put the monstrance right on top of the altar. Uh, you'll be a lot closer to it. And I think that'll aid us in our prayers. So uh, these are the altar, and you see all of the, the main altar furniture. We, we chose a, a cream marble uh, that we found. Uh, it's Italian. And, and then we found to accent it a blue marble, which is actually out of Africa. It is just beautiful, especially when the light hits it a certain way. Uh, we, uh, we, we want, we're thinking of uh, major theme colors in here, and, and uh, blue is, is one of the main themes of colors of the stained glass. And so we have these accented uh, marble pieces in blue. You'll notice them on all of the furniture, as well as in the niches for the statues, which we'll show you in a few minutes. So we have the, the, the main altar, the, the celebrant's chair, uh, the, the ambo behind me over on this side, and of course, of course, the altar of repose with the tabernacle. And it is just a glorious uh, tabernacle that we're uh, so uh, blessed to have. Uh, all of these various elements uh, were uh, 
given to the chapel by the donation of so many of our own parishioners. I, I could not be more grateful for their generosity. This is something that will belong to the parish uh, for decades to come. And it will be a great place of prayer. And, and indeed, we'll be, be, uh, we're, gonna, we're looking forward to starting to use all of this space uh, beginning next, next week after the Archbishop uh, consecrates this altar and dedicates this space to us. So we're looking forward to that. So we'll talk, return next to a couple of the statues uh, that we have that are on the sides. Um, statues of Mary and Joseph, uh, also out of marble, and uh, a place of prayer that uh, we'll be able to have right in front of each of those. So I'm standing in front of the statue of Joseph. It's on the right hand side as you walk into the chapel. Kind of another little area of prayer. And one of the traditional elements that we see in a lot of Catholic churches around the world is uh, Joseph on one side on the right and Mary and the child Jesus on the left. We'll see Mary in a few minutes. Uh, but here on the right hand side is the statue of Joseph. I could not be more happy with it. It is absolutely beautiful. These were carved in Italy uh, from Carrera marble uh, by hand uh, out of a solid piece of marble and the artistry is just unbelievable when you uh, get a little bit closer come in and take a look don't touch it though so you're gonna come in and you'll see the detail on his toes on the saw you can see the saw teeth on there you'll see that his fingernails the musculature in his forearm uh, but it's a beautiful representation of Joseph we chose to, to, to depict Joseph the worker, right, as a young man. Often in Christian art, he's an older man or something with a staff. Here we wanted him as a, as in his prime. So here's Joseph the carpenter. Joseph who would have taught the child Jesus that carpentry trade. And he's carrying the tools of the carpenter with his saw in his right hand and his carpenter square in the other. And he's wearing, of course, that, uh, that work uh, bib overall. Uh, to, to, so he's ready and he's on the job here. Uh, but a beautiful representation of St. Joseph, uh, leader of the Holy Family and patron of the Universal Church. Indeed, when you come in for Mass, make sure you stop over here and say a prayer to St. Joseph. So we're here on the left-hand side of the chapel, uh, to the left of the altar as you're looking at it. And here, uh, the beautiful uh, statue of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Child Jesus. Uh, just uh, again, uh, just a stunning uh, rendition of the Virgin and Child from the same uh, artists uh, that did the St. Joseph. Uh, here we chose uh, a statue that was uh, originally sculpted, sculpted in Germany uh, and we had them reproduce it and they did a beautiful job. We like the movement of her, uh, of her gowns here. It really adds a lot of movement to the, uh, to the statue. And of course, the, the pose that they're in uh, with Mary uh, kind of cradling the child Jesus, holding him up uh, by his little foot there. And of course, how beautiful uh, Jesus is reaching his hand forward to, uh, to touch and caress her face. It reminds us uh, when we look at this that Jesus is rightly so uh, called uh, Messiah and Lord, the Son of God. But he's also the Son of Mary. Right? She knows him and loves him and knows him better than we do uh, because she gave birth to him and raised him and, and carried him like is being depicted here. Uh, another magnificent uh, rendition of the Virgin and Child and uh, one that will be a, a great place to come and pray. You're going to come in, you're going to go pray to St. Joseph, you're going to come over here, you'll say a prayer to the Blessed Mother and the Child Jesus. Uh, we're so happy with it and look forward uh, to you seeing this one as well. Well, one final element I wanted to mention to you uh, are the Stations of the Cross. Uh, we have them along around the entire uh, perimeter of the interior of the chapel. Uh, it's, it's a great story that goes behind them. I, I've been looking for uh, good Stations of the Cross for um, uh, two years and I just couldn't find any that I just really liked. And uh, no matter where I looked and no matter what catalogs or wherever I traveled, I couldn't find any, any ones that I really thought would go well, would go good in here. And so it was just a couple of months ago when I went on the trip to the Holy Land, we were in Bethlehem and uh, we went to the original Nativity Catholic Church there in Bethlehem. And just uh, right there near it, 
they took us to a religious article store and that was run by a, a couple of Christian families and I go in there and sure enough uh, there are the Stations of the Cross and I go that's it right there and indeed they are just beautiful examples of the Stations they are uh, of course the colors and everything match too so that's a good thing but they're all hand carved out of uh, olive wood which is native to the Holy Land and uh, each depicts the each station is just done with uh, moving artistry and uh, they're of a size that I think fits extremely well in here and of course the colors they're just a terrific addition to the chapel and kind of help round it out so we're so excited about uh, about those I was so happy to find them and uh, what a great story uh, to have found them in Bethlehem uh, right outside the original Nativity Catholic Church so there's the story of the Stations of the Cross so that's our little chapel my friends uh, Holy Family Chapel uh, such a pleasure to uh, to have have it finished finally uh, we're so uh, much looking forward to getting it consecrated this weekend we're looking forward to getting the pews in here and all the little bits uh, finally finished and opening the doors as soon as we can so that you can come in here and see it for yourself uh, it's a beautiful little chapel we can't wait to start using it we want this to be a place of prayer and indeed all of the elements that we put in here are, are designed to help us pray uh, to pray to the Lord to be a house of prayer where we can draw closer to Christ and through Christ to eternal salvation so indeed that's our goal and we so much look forward to being able to use our new chapel to worship in here together as the people of God thanks for watching look forward to seeing you in here soon